What do former Reagan chief of staff Ken Duberstein, uh, Republican Senator John Ensign, former Bush senior, Bush senior Secretary of State Lawrence Eagleburger, and 59% of likely voters have in common? They all more or less agree on Sarah Palin. Here's Ken Duberstein talking to NBC's Nora O'Donnell today. Remember, Duberstein is the guy who worked for Reagan. John McCain's, I think about him every day, Ronald Reagan. I think it has very much undermined uh, the whole question of John McCain's judgment. Even at McDonald's, you're interviewed three times before you're given a job. Ow. Senator Ensign, the gentleman from Nevada. John McCain's much more qualified than Barack Obama, and certainly Joe Biden's much more qualified uh, than Sarah Palin is. Yikes. John Ensign's a Republican, remember? Onward to Lawrence Eagleburger, one of John McCain's coveted five Republican secretaries of state who has endorsed him. When NPR's Neil Conan asked him if Palin is qualified to take over in a crisis, here's the ringing endorsement he offered up. Of course not. Give her some time in the office, and I think the answer would be she will be adequate. I can't say that she would be a genius in the job. But I think she would be enough to get us through a, a four-year, well, I hope not. Wow. Today, Secretary Eagleburger tried to get back to the company line. He went on Fox News and said he just wasn't thinking when he said Palin isn't qualified. The old temporary loss of faculties defense. That said, there are no Eagleburian redos among respondents in the latest New York Times CBS poll. Only 35% of those likely voters say they think Palin is prepared to be vice president. That's down seven points from a month ago. And you know, it's not just what polls say or what her presumed political allies say. It's what Sarah Palin says herself almost every day on the campaign trail. Like, for example, today. Let's not retreat from wars that are almost won. Which wars are the almost won wars? Iraq? David Petraeus won't go there, so Sarah Palin probably shouldn't either. Afghanistan? John McCain won't even go there, Governor. Still, the theory persists that she is the new face of the Republican Party. John McCain's view? Decidedly undecided. Here he was today on Good Morning America. Do you think that she is the face of the Republican oh, Party think, going forward? I think to a large degree is vice president or, or <laughs> I think there's no doubt. Has anybody ever worn that expression over the word or? Do you mind if we just play it one more time? I think to a large degree is vice president or, or. What's he thinking there? Or, or Senator McCain loses, or Sarah Palin becomes president. It kind of looked like McCain hadn't gotten around to thinking about those possibilities until that moment. And we saw it happen right there on his face. Most of the rest of the country has got to that moment over the last couple of months. We've been thinking about these possibilities. So what happens if or happens? Is this the start of Sarah Palin's ascent? Or has this campaign been the start of her demise? Joining me now, MSNBC political analyst Lawrence O'Donnell. Lawrence, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Good to be with you, Rachel. If John McCain loses the election, um, will all this criticism um, have destroyed Sarah Palin's political future? Is there a chance that this is the end of her, political, her short national political career? Or is it, is it definitely the beginning? There's nothing that destroys a political career like losing. Uh, forget everything that Colin Powell has said and that his close friend Ken Duberstein said at the beginning of this segment. Uh, losing is the unforgivable thing in American politics now. Uh, take a look at the careers of the losers on the vice presidential ticket recently. Uh, ask uh, John Edwards how, what a great launching pad that was for his next presidential campaign. Ask Joe Lieberman what a great launching pad that was for his presidential campaign, which he did attempt to run after losing on the VP slot. Uh, ask Geraldine Ferraro how it works out. Uh, there is absolutely no model out there for success after losing uh, on the vice presidential slot. Dan Quayle 
lost in that slot, tried to run for president after that. It was hopeless. So there's a big swoon among the pundit class about, you know, what a great position she's going to be in uh, if McCain loses as the front runner uh, for Republicans. And they are just imagining this. There's absolutely no model for that having happened before. <clears throat> and none of the people I named uh, just then had such high negative ratings in the vice presidential slot as she has. She has created a whole new territory of negative polling for the vice presidential slot. In addition to the overall problem of losing as the vice presidential nominee on the ticket, do you think that it will matter whether or not she gets the bulk of the blame if they do lose? Does it matter if she has seen as the worst vice presidential choice politically uh, in, a, in a political generation, if not in a century? No, I mean, look at how hopeless John Edwards' future turned out to be. And this is before he got into any scandal trouble, uh, coming off of that ticket. And no one said John Edwards did a bad job running uh, for, for VP. Uh, you know, Lieberman did an okay job running for VP. It didn't matter. No one wanted to hear from him again as a, as a national candidate. Uh, now, she will be given an unusual amount of blame uh, for the defeat of this ticket if it goes down. Uh, you know, th this, is, uh, this is extraordinary stuff that you're hearing from her own party. Really extraordinary stuff. It's unprecedented what Colin Powell had to say about her. It's unprecedented what Ken Duberstein, a former Republican White House Chief of Staff, had to say about her. Her own hometown newspaper in Alaska uh, in endorsing Barack Obama had to specify that as much as they think she's done an okay job as Alaska governor, they don't think she's ready to leave the state of Alaska for, for higher office. We've never really seen this kind of outpouring of negat negativity against a vice presidential candidate. If John McCain and Sarah Palin do lose badly, this will be the second time that we've ever had a woman on a major party ticket and the second time that that ticket lost badly. Um, is this, will this hurt potential future women candidates? It will hurt token women candidates, which is arguably what you had in both instances, in Geraldine Ferraro and in Sarah Palin. Uh, but what Hillary Clinton showed uh, and what other uh, women senators around the country have shown in very strong statewide runs all around the country, not just in, in New England, but from New England to California to Arkansas, we have these very strong women Senate candidates who I think are showing all the time how, how powerful uh, women candidacies can be. And they're beating very strong male candidacies all over the country. Uh, and uh, Hillary Clinton beat every man running except for Barack Obama uh, in her field. Uh, so I think the serious woman candidate is as strong a possibility as the serious male candidate. But picking someone because she's female, sticking her on the ticket, turns out to be a bad idea. Surprise. <laughs> MSNBC political analyst Lawrence O'Donnell, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Happy Halloween, Lawrence. Thanks, Rachel.